I would like to tell you a bit about uh, an unusual New Year's res resolution that I made a couple of years ago. On New Year's Eve 2015, I decided to stop buying stuff. Now, I hadn't run out of money, and I wasn't planning to spend the year in a cave meditating, and I also hadn't any problems thinking about things that I would love to call my own. So what had happened to me? Well, what had happened was this. I had just come back from a holiday on Bali, which you know is being advertised as a paradise. But instead of pictures of gorgeous tropical nature, uh, endless beaches and deep blue skies, the pictures that I remember, that I still had in my mind, were pictures of burning rubbish, of fire and smoke and heaps of plastic and shorelines so deeply covered with waste that it was hard to tell where the beach was ending and where the ocean began. Both of them, the beach and the ocean, were covered beneath an endless blanket woven of all the thousands of colors that industrial materials can take, from the pink of brand new flip-flops, to the neon colors of children's toys, to the green and brown of plastic bottles. It was a huge wasteland of plastic, and I only saw the surface, the things that happened to stay afloat. Now, as I waded through this wasteland, I was both shocked and disgusted. Shocked by the sheer amount of stuff and disgusted by the lifestyle that produced it. A lifestyle that happened to be my own. As a matter of fact, much of what washes up on the shores of Bali doesn't actually have its origin on the island, but it finds its way there from every corner of the world where people can afford to throw it away. It was this holiday on Bali that made me want to stop buying stuff. Now, I'm no ascetic, I'm not an activist, and I'm not against the market economy. But I couldn't just turn away and pretend that I wasn't responsible for this mess. I knew I was, and in fact, we all are. When I was back in Switzerland, a friend came visiting with three pairs of shoes that she had bought but never worn, and she was wondering whether maybe my girlfriend would like to try them on. Around the same time, another friend had just bought the new iPhone twice because he couldn't quite decide yet which screen size he preferred. And yet another friend was trading his car for the third time in three years crazy. But I myself, I wasn't any better. I had just bought the same coat twice, once in olive green and once in a fancy color called slate gray, which wasn't too different from olive green after all. So I couldn't help but wonder, have we all gone completely insane? And was there a way to stop this madness? What would happen if I just stopped it? I decided to give it a try. So for the next 12 months, I promised myself I wouldn't buy anything. But I did allow myself two exceptions. Exception number one, I was still allowed to buy what I needed in order not to die. Rule number one, don't die. Exception number two, I was still allowed to buy what I needed in order not to start stinking. So that was rule number two, don't stink. Or in other words, I was still allowed to buy food, which is rather helpful if you plan to do this for a year. And 
I was still allowed to buy things like soap, shampoo, toothpaste, etc. All the rest had to stay on the shelves. Now, was it difficult to do that? Was it difficult to do this with just these two exceptions? The surprising answer, not at all. I quickly came up with two strategies that helped me avoid even the most attractive stuff. Strategy number one, instead of seeing offers as invitations, I started treating them as attacks, as personal attacks on me. So instead of saying, hey, look at this, this is great, I have to have this, I tried to reframe the situation and say, wait a minute, they're trying to trick me. They're trying to sell me something that I don't really need. So every offer was in fact a trap. And my job was it to, to say no, to not, not to fall into, into these traps. Say no, 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 and no again. That was strategy number one. And to put this strategy to a stress test, I decided to go to Zurich and walk down Bahnhofstrasse. You know that street. It's like a miracle mile of consumerism. And so I was walking down Bahnhofstrasse, and the first shop, the first shop window that caught my attention was a sports gear vendor. Um, they had skis in the window. And I love skiing. I love skiing more than almost everything else. So I saw those skis, they were awesome. But I also realized that they were exactly the same pair of skis that I already had at home, just in a different design. They just put on a different design every year. So I said, no thanks, and walked on. Next uh, shop that I can remember was the diesel store selling jeans. I was quite fond of that brand back then. So I looked at the jeans in the store, and I also began to wonder, did Lucky Luke, are you familiar with Lucky Luke? My great childhood hero, still is, kind of. Did Lucky Luke really own more than one pair of jeans? And I don't think he did. So I said, no thanks, and walked on. Uh, next up was the Apple store selling that new iPhone that my friend had bought twice. And about half the people I knew were already on it, on the latest version. I was, and I was wondering whether I should be too. But then I asked myself, can this new phone really do anything that my old phone can't, something that really matters? And the obvious answer was no. So it was no thanks, and I walked on. Now, with this mindset, dishing out no's left and right, every little no started feeling like a victory. So it was, you want to sell me this? No thanks, yes. You want to sell me that? No thanks, yes. So after a while of practicing, I, I, I was walking the streets in constant triumph, which felt good. And also, I realized that I suddenly had quite a bit of money left which brings me to strategy number two. When I felt like rewarding myself for my heroic persistence, or to be honest, when I just couldn't fight the urge anymore to finally spend some of that money, I spent it on services instead of goods. So instead of buying a new t-shirt, I decided to get a new haircut. Or instead of buying a CD, which was still a thing back then, I decided to go to a concert. Instead of purchasing whatever happened to be in, I started to go out more often. Now, you could say, okay, but this strategy number two, isn't that just a, a cheap trick? Or a rather expensive trick, actually, because I wasn't really spending less, I was just spending it differently. And that's true. But I can also assure you that this strategy number two, buying services instead of goods, doesn't just work psychologically, because it feels great to support your local services. It also works philosophically. 
Because as an economic activity, offering services is much, much more sustainable than the production of superfluous goods. Most services hardly produce any waste. And also, so as an economic activity, it's actually the economy that we all have to support if we want to decouple our growing prosperity, which we all want, from growing resource consumption, which is something that we should avoid. You could say that services are the economy of the future if we choose to have one. And also, services foster social interaction. It makes a huge difference whether you sit at home and buy a new pair of shoes in front of your computer alone, or whether you go and see your local shoemaker, have your old boots repaired, and maybe have a chat with him or her. And last but not least, services do make us happier than goods. Now this may sound a little wishy-washy, but it's actually a well-proven scientific fact. The happiness we get from an experience, like a day on a mountain hiking, maybe using the service of a cable car, lasts much, much longer than the kick we get out of a material purchase like that extra pair of hiking boots that you actually know you don't really need. So you could say, buying goods is like eating sugar, but experiences are much more nourishing for the soul. So after a year of buying nothing, or almost nothing, I came to a conclusion that was both simple and surprising. Buying less turns out to be a gain for yourself, for the environment, but also and even for the local economy. Now, did I eventually go back to buying stuff again? Yes, I did. It was the lack of socks that forced me to. I simply didn't have any socks left that didn't have any holes in them and the situation started to get uncomfortable. But it also did provoke a new rule that I've been following ever since and that I would like to recommend to all of you. It goes like this. Whenever you buy something new, replace something old with it. And important, something old that is either used up or broken. And if neither of those two things apply, then you don't buy the new thing. That's the rule. Following this new rule, I eventually had to give in and bought new socks. These very nice red ones that I'm still wearing today. Which also taught me another lesson, maybe the most important one. Good things can last a very long time. Thank you.